Today I'm showing you how to get kegged homebrew into cans and into bottles. So let's get started. So if you're watching this video, you might have a kegging setup at your house, which means that you are taking and force carbonating most of your brews at this point. And well, I say most, you're force carbonating the brews that you want carbonated. The perks of having a kegging setup are super awesome because you are able to do way more with mead making, with beer pouring often. You don't have to worry about priming sugar. So stuff like that's really cool. If you haven't invested into it, I would recommend to do it. We're gonna talk about ways you can do that. I've also got two different videos on how to, uh, how to basically set up your kegging system, how I have mine set up. And then if you're just wanting to bottle carb your brews, I have a video on that. So I'll try and put those down below. So first of all, this is for if you have that kegging system, which I'll show you a little video of mine. My system is currently seven taps at my house. I have a three tap kegerator and I have a four tap keyser. And eventually I'm upgrading to something different and gonna get rid of all those, but that's not important. Let's say you want to be able to can your beer. That's a little bit of a bigger jump. We're gonna to come to that second because it's a bigger jump than just straight up bottling your brew off of the tap. Let's say you have your brew ready to go, ready to be uh, drank, but you're trying to take it over to a friend's house. You could do it a, multiple diff a couple different ways, I should say. I should say. You can, of course, just take and go straight off the tap into a bottle, literally just pour from the tap into the bottle and then cap, you know, after you filled up the bottle. Now, that's an easy way to do it. You'll hard hold your carbonation for uh, plenty of time to get through your drinking. This is not the best option if you are trying to long-term, long-term, age the brew. I would only really resolve to this option if I'm gonna drink it within a week or so because it uh, allows for more oxygen introduction. If you're looking to take and get less oxygen introduced into the brew, they make a couple different things. You normally wanna try and purge your bottles with some CO2 at the bottom before you have your liquid go in there, and that's to help keep oxygen from uh, flowing into there. It also helps a little bit with the bubbling up, so there's less problems with that. And the ways you can do this, I have two different things here. I have kind of like a beer gun. This is a beer gun that has a gas connection. The gas connection goes to right here. And what you do is you connect your gas line and you connect it to your tank, of course. You put this into the bottle and when you press this button, it will it'll basically send some CO2 down to the bottom of the, the uh, bottle. And then when you press all the way down, there's a spring release which starts to fill said bottle. It'll fill all the way up to the point where you want it. And then at that point, you basically cap it. This is nice because you have liquid connection, gas connection. You do have to have a CO2 tank connection as well. So that's just something to consider. Another one here is uh, recently, some, this is recently something I got. This is the tap cooler connection. I like this one because it's cool for two reasons. The beer gun, you have to have your connection to the keg specifically. So you have to have whatever line to that keg and it's just extra stuff to buy. You go straight to the out of that keg. This tap cooler can do that too. You can connect to your keg at the top here, which is nice. And then you can connect a gas line on the side. Specifically, these come with two different kinds of gas lines. You can do a uh, ball lock connection gas line or you can do basically just your normal threaded gas line. This little straw basically goes all the way down. So if you have a really long, tall bottle, you put this into said bottle, and then the top of this here seals around and it will hold the pressure that's created in the bottle. The tube you see on the side is intended to help uh, release that pressure so that the liquid will continue to flow. Obviously, if there's no release of uh, pressure, then the liquid won't flow down. So you can purge your bottle with this, with your CO2, you can fill it up. Basically, you just uh, turn on your, your tap or specifically, there's like a little connector. 
The connector looks like this. This is how you open and close. So you're opening the line, closing the line. This is the ball lock connection that you see here. And you fill up your bottles from here. There, this is a ball lock connection on the side. You can of course do your Senki kegs, anything like that you have if you have different options there. Tap cooler, this thing's a little expensive though. I will say that the beer gun, you're probably gonna spend 50, 60 bucks probably on a beer gun and connections. Um, this is specifically the Northern Brewer Last Straw, which I like as well. It does have a connection that's similar to this little round thing, but the beer gun's cheaper. The tap cooler's a little more expensive. I'll put some prices on the screen. I did drop some money. I have two of these things, so they're kind of expensive. You can connect to the keg, or what I liked about the last straw is that you can also connect straight to the tap. So you literally just take this side, put it right into the tap itself, extend this to wherever you need it, and fill up your bottle that way. And it also fills up in a similar fashion. You can't really do that with or with uh, cans as well. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So you can use a couple options. If you want to fill a bottle, you can just straight up come off the tap, put your bottle underneath, and kind of do what they do at a lot of uh, breweries. You know, if you take a growler to go, that's kind of what they do. Cap it like that. You can go get a beer gun or a Northern Brewer Last Straw, something like this right here, with all your connections, and purge your bottles. Or you can do the tap cooler thing. Tap cooler's pretty fun. It has a in tandem thing that I'll talk about here in a second that I've used a lot. That pouring system is the same for all kinds of kegs. So I have here, this is a just a one gallon keg. Normally your connection looks like this. You've got, of course, your, your tap handle. You can just basically pour straight off of it into the bottle, do all of your stuff if you have a one gallon keg. This is not five gallon keg exclusive. If you have, if you have the ball lock connections and you need to do this with the one gallon keg, they do make this thing specifically, which is pretty cool. It is a ball lock connection. So basically it is gas and liquid. I really like this thing because you could pour out of it, you could serve in a different way. You could actually use your, your beer gun connections as well to it. You can use your tap cooler connections. All of that is cool. I'll put some links down below to these kegs and this other equipment if you're interested in that. So coming off of the keg itself is a lot of fun and honestly, it's easiest to do if you just are gonna drink it quickly just to do the whole pour into the bottle and then go take it to your buddy's house. For long-term storage, I would suggest doing the beer gun thing, doing the tap cooler thing because you wanna have less oxygen introduction because beer, wine, mead, anything that's carbonated like that will um, have some problems when oxygen is introduced. So let's say you're like me and you have been bottling your brews and you're like, this is fun, but I'm tired of worrying about glass. And you wanna start canning your brews. This is a new experience for me in life. This is a lot of fun. This was canned probably a month ago and it still has carbonation. I can prove to you right now. Opens up just like a normal brew. Still carbonated and very tasty. How do you get to where you can do this? This is a bigger investment because cans are kind of expensive. You can buy them in large quantities, like a 240 uh, can box. They do take up space. I went, I burned through 240 cans over the course of probably three or four months back when I was giving a lot of stuff away and I still give a lot of stuff away to my friends. But box is big. They comes with um, the can lids themselves. You can get a 12 ounce can. You can also do the, is it 12 or 16, the larger ones. But you need not only the cans, you need a way to seal said cans. And there are a couple of systems. Specifically, I use the Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest, right? Not Oktoberfest, October can seamer. So this is a manual can seamer. I don't have my, my uh, drill here right now, but the, my drill attaches to the top of this. And then you put the can in, I'll show you a little demo video. After you filled it up, which we'll go backwards here in a second. And you put it in there, you put the lid on top, you seal it down. It's got a splash guard. 
and then you basically run it. And I'm not gonna go deep with this because there are videos on how to run the system if you want it to know, but this is what you need to be able to seal the cans. It's not as simple as just like crimping the corners. You have to have a specific can sealer. You can get automatic ones that are not drill powered. They have a button with power, but I opted for a cheaper version and uh, I kind of wish I had got the powered one, to be honest. So now let's go backwards a little bit. How do you get it into the can? This is a little tougher because you want, you could do it the simple way where you just pour straight into the can from the tap and you fill it up all the way as much as you can. You put your lid on and then you put it into here and you seal. However, you run the risk of um, that's the same thing with the other version. Your bottles are gonna have some oxygen or cans are gonna have some oxygen. So I invested more money, of course, into this hobby. Alongside my tap cooler connection that we talked about for the, the actual bottles, they make a tap cooler can connection. This goes right, this is a magnet right on the side of my, uh, my keyser, excuse me and basically just holds. You put the can inside of here. Again, I'll show you a little demo video. And it seals down. You put your tap cooler in through this right here. And then you have a CO2 purging spot so you can CO2 purge your can. And then you have an out port. And you run your liquid line to your keg. Lots of equipment here. And the, the thought is that with this filling up, it seals here. And because it's sealed, the CO2 comes out of this side, out of my tube that I normally have there. And then you get less, uh, well, you, you fill the can with less oxygen or little to no oxygen. And that method is uh, pretty nice, but it does take more time than just pouring into the can itself and then sealing. All of the equipment I'm talking about today is kind of expensive. And I, I caution you with this, canning is not something you hop in for 20, 40 bucks. Like bottling off a keg is mainly just that, the beer gun kind of idea. I had to spend, I think it was like 400, 500 bucks for this can seamer. Cans are like a hundred bucks for like 240 and then you have to buy, like if you want to do it the nicer way, air quotes around that, this little tap cooler setup is stupid expensive. So I've invested like probably 800 bucks to a thousand bucks in my ability to be able to do this. Now, it's really nice and honestly, I like the presentation side of it. It's kind of fun, but it is more expensive and I would not suggest you do it unless you were just really wanting to spend the money. Keep with your bottles for a long time. Bottles will take you a long way. While it, the one pro I'll say of doing the cans is that single use, I'm not worried about getting anything back from my friends. Lots of times if I give them bottles, I'm thinking, okay, I need to get bottles back because I got to refill them. And sometimes it's hard to do that. With cans, I'm just saying, keep it. I'm still giving away a lot of stuff. I'm probably uh, not in the positive uh, as far as money is concerned for my canning operation. But both are really fun. I recommend you get you start get started with bottles. Come off of your keg if you want to see the kegging setup. There's equipment and stuff you can you need to get to be able to keg. But it is a game changer. And if you're watching this, you probably have a kegging setup or you are thinking about investing in it. Canning is the next level. If uh, I were doing this again, I would not get the hand one. It was about $100 more to get an auto, like battery powered, just put the can in and hit a button. I didn't do that because I was trying to be cheap and I wish I had. So I'll put some links below if you want to support me and buy any of this stuff. All of those, all of the links will be Amazon links. So if you purchase through that, I get a little bit of uh, affiliate code stuff from it. So that'll support me. I think that's it. I think I've covered all of the, the basics of this for starters, there's probably more in-depth stuff, but I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know what you think below. Make sure to hit subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you in the future with another video. Cheers.